Hi, welcome back to Frazzle Dad's Minis. I'm Jim, Frazzle Dad. Today I am going to wrap up and show you the completed Big Monster Cthulhu from Simon's Cthulhu Death May Die Kickstarter. Um, there have been a couple other videos on this. Uh, it's been a fun piece to work on. I mean, it's just ginormous. Um, a couple things that have been really impactful on this uh, beast as I've worked on it. Just the scale and size of it have offered me a lot of opportunity to really get a lot of reps in on specific techniques. Um, glazing of the wings, for example, I talked about that earlier. Um, so this video, I've got some uh, recordings of some working sessions and I'll talk through a couple things. I got a lot of great lessons learned on this in addition to all the practice. As I alluded to, I think in the last video, one of the big lessons learned was really just a reminder, and it's normally how I work. When I'm starting on an important piece, come up with a rough plan and you can adapt that plan. I didn't do that on this piece, and it wasn't the end of the world, but if I started with a little bit better vision, I would have addressed some of the lighting issues earlier on. Uh, anyway, I'll walk through a number of other things. Let's just get to some of the painting work. Even when I do have a plan, as I start to get close to the end of a project, I'll make what I call a tear list. And I don't even know if I'm using this phrase right, but um, some contractors and builder folks that I'd been around in the past had used the phrase tear list, meaning kind of the last items, a checklist of things that they needed to wrap up on a big house project. Anyway, I'm going over this figure at pretty close detail and adding on to the tear list of things that I'd been writing down as I was working on this. Um, so I'll often use this in conjunction with the plan. The plan will give me the big scope, but as I'm doing bits and pieces, I'll just keep adding things to the tear list. And then that gives me a very good checklist so I don't forget things as I'm getting close to the end. I'm back working on the highlights here. I got that lovely undershading with the ink that I talked about in the last session and now I'm really trying to hit up and bring up the highlights of really just the brightest spots so I'm paying attention to where that light should be hitting uh, in this particular case the light is coming from over the figure's left shoulder so I'm hitting some of the highest detailed ridges on you know, the right hand that's out front. I'll be hitting the eye ridges and more on the left, yeah, the left shoulder. Um, just really trying to bring things up to make even more stuff pop. At this point, I'm actually starting to do a little bit more glazing on the eyes. I'm still using that broken anvil uh, two and three green, but I'm trying to dilute it a fair amount and start to really smooth out some of those areas. And you can see I'm, I'm doing different areas, not just the eye ridges. Um, but one of the things I'm trying to do at this time is really start to smooth and build up the eye ridges because I really want them to pop because I want those eye ridges to pull attention to the eyes also. And I haven't covered the eyes yet, although they're done. We'll get to that in a minute. Here I'm adding some Broken Anvil yellow number four, which is a bright, cold yellow, um, sort of like the ice yellow that other folks use and here I'm really starting to try to make those eye ridges pop by having a very bright green again to draw attention in. 
Now it's time to clean up the tentacles. I haven't shown anything on these yet. What I did was base everything with AK Wine Red. If you've watched other videos of mine, you know I absolutely love that color. I used Bam Violet number three, maybe number four to start a little bit of highlighting, but then I moved on to other pieces. So now it's time for some cleanup here. Uh, I'm smoothing out some transitions, adding in some highlights, um, spending a lot of time examining how light strikes the tentacles. A bit later on, I'll use a dark red or even a brown mixed in with that wine red to get more shadow and undertone. But this is just a lot of careful work going around. Uh, I'm also playing a bit with some glaze here to help, again, smooth out some of the beautiful uh, transitions and highlights. Really love the color scheme that I've got on this. the talons a little bit. I'm using some Citadel shade, uh, the Seraphim Sepia. I really like it. It's a lovely light uh, shade and I'm actually diluting it down a bit. Um, the talons so far I've painted with some brown. I hit them with a heavy bit of shade but I'm really trying to get this in and tone down uh, the white that I've got over the top but also really detail out uh, the nooks and crannies just the texture on this model is just insane in a very good way. So getting that on and then I'll uh, hit with some other highlight after I finish this up. Okay, time to clean up the wing talons. I'm using Pallid Witch Flesh to neaten everything up and get a final coat on the flatter areas and the raised parts. Uh, I'm working hard to not cover up that cool gory blood um, undertone that is in the nooks and crannies and kind of the ripped parts of the talons there. And that pallid witch flesh just lets me um, bring up a really good highlight and it's a really nice contrast to that red. So just work here cleaning everything up and getting other coats down. Unfortunately, I lost the footage of me doing the actual painting on the eyes, but I'll walk you through what I did. This was taken or inspired from the first Hellboy movie, the one with Ron Perlman, the real Hellboy, where near the beginning of the movie when the Nazis are trying to open the portal, uh, the camera goes through the portal and then pans past Cthulhu or one of the other old gods uh, and an eye opens up and it fills the entire screen and it's just a really cool image. So I was trying to mimic that somewhat. What I did was paint each of the eyes with uh, AK, no, pardon me, Pro Acryl Bold Titanium White. Normally I use something like an ivory, but here I wanted that bright white background. And then I used a mix of a number of different paints. Um, I played with Pro Acryl transparent paints. I used um, Vallejo Model Color, one of their lovely uh, gold yellows. And then also I think the bold uh, red from Pro Acryl. And it's just working through carefully, um, getting some streaks and just blotches of color. And... I reworked them a couple times. Um, the combination of kind of almost glazing over the top with a little bit of that transparent really sealed the, the transparent red and the transparent yellow uh, really sealed the effect for me. And then the final touch after getting the pupil in, the dark black dot, was to come back with that bold titanium white um, 
thinned down with flow improver so it came off of the brush really well and just dotting in those specular highlights. Uh, I'm really happy with the eyes here. Like I said, I redid them a couple times, but they're a really key feature on this big ass creepy model and I wanted to make sure I did the best job I possibly could on them. So that's the eyes. Start with the white, play around with reds and yellows, um, the transparent paints to kind of almost glaze over a bit, uh, and then seal the deal with that specular highlight. There you have it. Uh, I have now walked you through pretty much all of the various major tasks that I did. I had a really good time on this piece. You know, missing how big it was when I selected that add-on, that's just, that's funny. You know, coming home from being off grid and finding a three foot box on the doorstep. That's just humorous. Um, I learned a lot and leveled up some critical skills uh, while I was doing this simply because it's so big. My glazing on the wings particularly, I feel I definitely leveled up a bit. I'm still not great, but I'm better than I was when I started and I improved. I count that a big win. Um, I had a good time doing the oil wash across the body. Uh, th that turned out just like I was hoping it would. Um, the dragon that I'd done before turned out well. This turned out really well. Um, the glowy runes were a lot of fun to work on and I definitely made some improvement in kind of my glow effect skills and then the eyes i'm really happy with as well uh, i had somebody on one of my discord servers that i'm part of uh mention something along the lines of the eyes creeped them out and i was like yes because that was exactly my intent so uh as always please you know subscribe hit the like button um let me know in the comments if you've worked on some huge piece and, you know, things you've learned uh, from doing that. Um, so without further ado, the grand big ass reveal. There you have it. Um, as always, I appreciate you watching, especially if you stuck it out till this point. Uh, appreciate the support. Again, kindly do all the things, right? Like, subscribe, leave me a comment. Um, but, you know, until next time, go out, have some fun, learn, experiment, try something new. At the end of the day, it's just paint and plastic. Until next time, bye-bye.